how to draw realistic skin texture, specifically the skin texture that's on your face. Welcome back. Now, if you don't know who I am, I'm a 22 year old graphite and charcoal artist that specializes in realism. I've won dozens of international and national awards for my work, and I'm here to teach you everything that I know. So if you wanna to learn to draw like this, then make sure to subscribe. Now, this week's hyperrealism tutorial is how to draw the skin texture that's on your face. Last week, we did how to draw the skin texture that is on your hands. Thank you guys so much for the positive feedback on that. And I asked what you wanted to see next, and a lot of you said that you wanted to see skin texture on the face. Now, this skin texture is a little more complicated than last week. There's a lot of different textures and patterns going on in just one small area. I'm gonna break it down step by step to make it as easiest as possible. So let's waste no time. But first, you need to know what you're using. So let's do a brief recap of all the tools that you'll need and then jump into it. Ready? Let's begin. For graphite, we just want typical graphite pencils. I use the Faber-Castell 9000 series. You'll want three of them to make it easy, a light, medium, and dark. I like to use 2H as my light, HB as my mid, and 2B as my dark. Any tone lighter than 2H is unnecessary, and anything darker than 2B should be used with charcoal. For charcoal, we just want some sort of pencil. I use the General's pencil, preferably the soft variation. It applies much easier and is the darkest type in my opinion. You also need a charcoal stick with sandpaper. With this, you'll make charcoal powder by filing down the stick onto a piece of paper. This is one of, if not the most important tools. Starting off for our erasers, the Tombow Mono Eraser is used for more prominent highlights with sharper edges, hence the minute tip. The Faber-Castell Perfection 7056 is used for more subtle highlights with softer edges, mainly tone and value based. An electric eraser is used for the strongest of highlights. By pressing the button, the tip spins at a speed that allows almost anything to be erased. It's a tool that I recommend to anyone, and one that once you have it, you don't really know what you do without it. The kneaded eraser can be shaped to your liking and is great for more abstract, unpredictable highlighted textures. Finally, the Faber-Castell dust-free eraser is used to clean up any smeared charcoal. It's not required, but incredibly convenient and I highly, highly recommend. As you can see, erasers are vital to the detailing process, which is why we have the most tools in this category. Any sort of makeup or art brush will be used for most of the blending. I personally use the IPC1 by Dynasty Brushes. I recommend you use some sort of makeup brush since they blend the smoothest from my experience. We'll use a blending tortillon for blending the smaller graphite details. Lastly, a soft tissue, preferably Kleenex, is best when trying to achieve a very smooth, uniform tone. These three tools will be able to blend anything we'll ever need. Looking at our miscellaneous items, the Faber-Castell Polychromos color pencil is fantastic at achieving the same dark tones of charcoal in small, hard to reach areas where charcoal cannot get. A white gel pen can be used at the end to strengthen and make the brightest highlights shine even more. However, it's not necessary. I personally like the jelly roll pens. Lastly, any stiff brush is great for wiping away all those shavings that get in the way. Again, not necessary, but very convenient. For my sharpeners, I use the KUM Magnesium Sharpener for my graphite pencils and the Generals All Art for my charcoal pencils. The brand doesn't really matter though. What matters is that you have separate sharpeners for your graphite and charcoal pencils because they actually sharpen differently. For my paper, I use the Strathmore 500 Series Plate or Smooth 3-ply. Because of how expensive it is, if you want to use the 400 or even the 300 Series, you can. The most important thing is that you use Bristol paper that is smooth, not vellum. Vellum does not allow you to achieve the smallest of details like Smooth can due to the vellum's tooth. Now that we've gone over every single tool that I use, let's begin. Here's the reference photo we're going to be using, and it's actually a photo of myself that I took just a couple minutes ago. Now this reference photo has a lot of different textures and skin patterns in it. We have the cheeks, under the eyes, the side of the face, above the lips, etc. To make it easiest for us, we're going to break it down into the four different sections. As always, we start with the grid. This is three inches by four inches. If you'd like a tutorial on how I make the grid, let me know in the comments below. First off, I'm just gonna sketch out the four areas that we discussed. Once the sketch is done, we always start with the base. Now for the base, we're just going to be using the brush and the charcoal powder. Just lightly dab your brush into the charcoal powder and slowly in a circular motion, put it onto the paper. No detailing is done at all in this step. We just wanna match the tones correctly. We want the darks to be as dark as they can be and we want the lights to be as light as they can be. Now, if you make anything too dark, you can just grab the Perfection 7056 like I did here and in a very soft circular motion, just pull that away until you're happy. 
A trick I always tell people is to do the squint test. So kind of back away, squint your eyes and look back and forth between your drawing and the reference and just see what needs to be darker, what needs to be lighter. Now for the more out of focus areas, we can use a tissue. A tissue is really good at making a smooth, even tone. However, it's important to note tissues will pull charcoal off. So while it does make it look smoother, it also is going to make it look lighter. Step number two is doing all the shadow detailing work. We're gonna start in area number one, AKA the cheek pores. So grab your graphite pencils. Now I'm using the HB right now. You wanna make sure you're using a pencil that is of the same tone as the background base. You can see I'm just going around with the pencil, adding in all the dots, and I'm actually applying them up and down as I go left to right. I'm just creating this little pattern of dots. Now this isn't organic texture, meaning that every skin is different, so you don't have to get all the dots perfect. Just make sure they're in the right area. Make sure they have some sort of structure, but have fun with it. The next stage is the highlights. We're gonna start with the Perfection 7056, which is best for doing softer highlights. When it comes to highlights, it's best to work soft to hard, meaning you wanna work with the more subtle and just build on top of that until you get to the really strong highlights. I'm going in between all the shadows we just made, and I'm just pulling some of the lighter areas. Look back and forth between your reference and your drawing, and add some highlights to the shadows. Not every shadow needs a highlight, but there should be more pairs than not. Once the softer highlights are done, we're gonna move on to some stronger ones with the Tombow Mono. As you can see in the reference, some of the shadows they have a really strong highlight right below the shadow. Now these highlights with the sharper edges, you're gonna to wanna to be using the Tombow. So I'm going all around and I'm adding all these stronger highlights. They add a little more depth to the shadow pores. And while I'm doing that, I'm also just creating a base texture. I'm going around where I see fit and I'm just lightly going back and forth to create some subtle line work that makes the skin look a little rough. Next up is the reinforce stage. Now that we have all the core highlights in place, we're gonna go back and reinforce and strengthen the shadows that correspond to those highlights we just made. Now you can see when you do the squint test going back and forth, there's some parts that need to be a little darker and that's kind of what the stage is for, to just darken those areas that need it, but now being able to be aware of those highlights and where they're at. Now for more of the abrupt shadows, you wanna be using the pencil because of the sharp edges. The tortillon is used for blending the smoother graphite and the brushes are just for larger area darkening. Also, just to keep track of where we are, I'm gonna draw the the nose and the eye outside of the drawing just to kind of help put into perspective where we are on the face. Anyway, I'm going in rotating between the three darkening tools and just going with my gut what needs darkened to help pop those highlights. Now is the time to be using the electric eraser to add the strongest of highlights. Whatever you do, don't overuse the electric eraser. The less you use it, the better it looks. Next, we're going to move up to section two and redo the steps. Now these are the darkest shadows. So I'm using the polychromos to get that almost black look. Now for the highlights, again, using the Perfection 7056 for the subtle look. So you go in, create the bump with the 7056, then reinforce that with the shadows. I'm using the graphite pencils right now to do that. The texture is almost as if the pores were inside out. So unlike in area one, where the highlights complemented the shadows, we now want the shadows to complement the highlights. Now reinforcing isn't just for shadows, it can be for the highlights too. And because in this case where the texture is almost inverted, that's what we're doing. Now to be perfectly honest, a lot of the skin texture is really just messing with it, switching between highlights and shadows until it looks good. And you're gonna see I do that a lot. I'm gonna switch between shadows and highlights, reinforcing both, creating these sort of organic and abstract textures that look three-dimensional because the shadows and highlights are purposefully placed. Switch between the erasers and the pencils, creating highlights and then reinforcing them to give it that pop look. Also, don't forget that while these are two different areas that we're working with, we don't want them to look like they're beside each other. We wanna make it look like they blend into one another. I spend the most time touching up this area because it is a tricky texture. It's one you just have to feel for. I use the tortillon to blend together areas one and two and just make it look as organic as you can. And then with the electric eraser, make sure to make those strongest of highlights pop. It's those highlights you can see almost right away that are pure white. It's right under the dark line and those creases that lead up to the eye. Moving on to section three and starting over with the shadows and the highlights. So for the shadows, we're just gonna go in with the brush and add some discoloration. Mainly, this is going to be highlighting work. Now our best friend here is going to be the Tombow Mono. With the softest hand, we're gonna go back and forth. Let your hand do some abstract pulling. Try to avoid lifting it off the paper as much as you can and just softly almost wiggle it back and forth. Now this does create a lot of shaving, so if you wanna use your stiff brush to wipe those away, I recommend it. Then switching back to the shadows, you can grab your pencil, the tortillon brushes, whatever you'd like. Kind of go in between those highlights, add some darker tones. 
With most faces, the texture here is much easier than sections one, two, and four. It's a very subtle rough texture that doesn't have a distinctive pattern like the pores. You can see down in the left corner, because there is facial hair, there are some darker splotches. So I'm just adding those in with a brush because you want the edges to be soft. The Tortillon is great for blending these soft spots to make them even softer, but you don't have to. And that's really about it for section three. Make sure you blend in the sections one and two by overlapping the patterns. Basically take the mono or the graphite pencils and add that really soft wiggling stroke work, have it overlap the pores and have it overlap everything up top. These touch-ups can take a minute, they could take 30 minutes. It really just depends on how textured you want that side of the face to be. You can add some outlier pores to help blend together sections one and three. Again, lastly, going in with the electric eraser, adding some really strong highlights that pop, most likely at the end. We'll go in with a gel pen and reinforce these electric eraser marks to make them really pop. Section four is a little bit like the pores. However, they're much smaller dots and they don't really sink in as much. Also, they appear to be in cracks and that's what the texture is like on most faces. So what I'm doing is we're starting over again with the shadows and with my graphite pencils, I'm going in, I'm adding small pore spots and sketching very soft lines through them in the direction that the pores go. Now for the highlights, we're going to use the 7056, but we're not going to go in between every single dot again like we did with the pores because we don't want them to look sunken in. Instead, I'm doing a light abstract texture moving all around just to give it some depth. Now, because this texture is kind of simple, the only reinforcing we're really doing is touching up. So the reinforcing and touching up here kind of go hand in hand. I'm smoothing out some of the graphite with the Tortillon, using the electric eraser to add some strong highlights to the pores. It's basically just a really flat texture with some blackhead looking marks. Now that we've got all the textures in place, let's add the facial hair. Obviously this step is different for every face. I have some stubble here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the polychromos pencil because it's the darkest pencil with the finest tip, sharpen it as best we can, and then just add the hairs one by one. This is a very freeing step that as long as you're in the right area, you don't have to match them up one by one. Just have fun with this step. Now, if you remember from last week, we can't just leave the hairs like that because they almost look like they're floating. We wanna make them look like they are grounded and go in under the skin. So grab the 2H graphite pencil and just color in and blend a little bit at the base of every hair and that's all you need for the hair. I'm now looking at everything as a whole and going back and forth between my reference and my drawing to see if there's anything I missed or anything that needs blended together better. Now would be a great time to use the knead eraser. So make a fine point with it and just dab it all around to create a nice abstract texture on top of everything. It's a nice little touch. Same with the white gel pen. If you want things to pop a little more, you can use it. If you want to just stay with charcoal and graphite, you can. I'm going to grab the jelly roll. I'm just going to color in some of the electric eraser marks. Don't do all of them. It's very easy to go overkill with this tool. Break it down by the base, the shadows, and the highlights. Make sure you're happy with each step and how they interact with one another. And once you're happy with all that, you're done. Of course, it's never going to be one-to-one, -one, but by following those steps and breaking it down very fundamentally like that, you're guaranteed to have a great variety of textures that come together and make a successful skin pattern. And there you have it. How to draw the skin texture that's on your face hyper-realistically. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope you found it useful. Let me know down in the comments what tutorial you want to see next week. If you want to see live updates of this drawing that's going on behind me, follow my Instagram and TikTok. I post daily content there and I go live on TikTok every weeknight. If you'd like limited edition prints of my artwork, check out my website and make sure to like and subscribe because it means the world to me and I want to keep making these for you. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I appreciate you being here and hopefully we see you soon.